multiple disciplinary uh, uh, applications of academic syndicate in Taiwan uh, from 2006. Uh, later, I will show you uh, what are those uh, disciplines as the uh, uh, collaboration case studies. And additionally, <clears throat> the system efficiency optimization, including the power thermal, because we are also running the data center uh, uh, by ourselves. Uh, and also the system application efficiency is also a key uh, missions of our center. From uh, January this year, our center has become a core facility for big data and scientific uh, uh, computing of academic syndica in Taiwan. Sorry. Yeah. Here's the summary of the uh, <coughs> our collaborations. <coughs> yeah. As I mentioned, we are supporting the uh, e-science and big data analysis based on the uh, WCG uh, core, te core technologies, based on the uh, uh, the lessons we learned the, the, from the collaborations. And <clears throat> uh, one uh, a different thing we are doing uh, as a service provider is that we, we, we are <clears throat> developing the uh, customized workflow to integrate the uh, data analysis pipeline, for examples, for the user communities, to integrate the uh, analysis workflow to the uh, uh, cloud infrastructures. Now we are supporting more than 50 uh, research groups, about uh, near uh, 200 users in academic uh, 200 active uh, users <coughs> with the uh, flexible collaboration models. Uh, later, I have another slide showing the uh, uh, current uh, collaboration models. We also participated in uh, in some uh, Asia regional collaboration. For example, this uh, uh, cloud uh, technology and also disaster mitigation. Uh, <clears throat> on Wednesday, we have uh, two sessions about that part. Uh, <clears throat> in this uh, uh, figure, that's the resource usage. usage. <clears throat> the blue line, that's the CPU. Uh, the uh, growth is quite uh, steady in about 20% uh, in average growth rate uh, in the past 10 years. For the GPU, that's a, a very deep uh, ex exponential growth uh, from uh, 2017. Uh, uh, the data center uh, situation of, of our center is right. Uh, we have a two megawatt and uh, 400 tons of uh, the uh, air conditioner, about 100 standard racks in our data center. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, area is not big, it's uh, quite uh, contents, uh, level, uh, uh, one. And uh, we are now supporting uh, more than 10,000 CPU core and uh, more than 200 GPU of different uh, 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 specs. The other thing that we have uh, quite large uh, disk storage space for uh, different e-science applications for different users. And here are some of uh, <coughs> the uh, collaboration uh, user community from uh, particle physics, uh, <coughs> astronomy, uh, structure, biology, drug discovery, uh, biodiversity, chemistry, ses seismology or science, environmental changes, etc. And uh, <coughs> the CMS, the uh, gravitational wave, the ice cube are new uh, user communities just started from uh, uh, later last year. And of course, the um, <clears throat> machine learning based data analysis is quite, uh, the, the requirements is booming uh, also in Taiwan. And uh, we are <clears throat> running the research infrastructure and also uh, we have uh, a new services together with other partners supporting the research data management <clears throat> over the cloud as well. So WCG is the uh, uh, the largest user community of AGC uh, in in the uh, past twenty years. Here are summaries of the uh, <coughs> uh, what we've been uh, supporting this uh, group as a T1 center uh, from other experiment. We are now supporting also the uh, CMS experiment, and CPU re GPU resource will be uh, <coughs> uh, uh, deployed uh, for the. Uh, high energy physics uh, very soon. 
now we've been, uh, we are supporting about 10 petabyte uh, uh, disk st storage, uh, migrating uh, from a, uh, a DPM to a new uh, storage systems for the uh, WSG applications. In uh, 2022, last year, we are uh, uh, contributing more than 30 uh, petabyte of data in and out uh, our centers and to other <coughs> uh, uh, partners. And now we have a two 10 gigabit link directly from our center to the uh, to CERN and also to other partners. Uh, the other is a, a summary. We also joined the uh, development of the, the uh, uh, NERS software and uh, other. Uh, uh, that's fine. No problem. About the uh, uh, distributed data analysis framework, <clears throat> we are participating in the development of the uh, uh, cloud service federations uh, by integrating with the, uh, uh, the that, that's the Panda uh, uh, distributed job management systems uh, to dispatch uh, the jobs to different resources, for example, the GPU cluster, the CPU cluster, uh, to different using container and also the uh, uh, cloud technologies. That's one of the uh, project we participated uh, to the uh, core technologies about the distributed analysis. So <clears throat> I mentioned the uh, flexible collaboration models. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the way we are uh, collaboration with uh, various disciplines, user communities are here. Uh, <clears throat> there's a, a common uh, authentication or authorization infrastructures so that users could access all the resources that we provided and also uh, to the uh, uh, partner services. So there are now uh, two types of, of services. The first one is about <clears throat> the uh, conventional cluster uh, managed by the SLURM. So the, uh, uh, that's uh, familiar to most of the users to submit jobs to the cl cluster using CPU or GPU. The other way is uh, we develop the uh, web uh, user interface or the uh, scientific uh, gateway uh, <clears throat> so that users could submit job <clears throat> through the uh, web portal. That's the uh, cloud services are uh, sitting behind um, uh, making use of the Kubernetes framework, the uh, 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 cloud virtualizations, etc. And in the middle, we also build up, uh, integrate the uh, uh, machine learning and framework and also other uh, software, scientific software frameworks here. So uh, <clears throat> in addition to those uh, shared resources provided by our center, we also could integrate those resources uh, <clears throat> from uh, contributed from our user communities so, so that we can integrate together and <clears throat> we can set up different priority uh, for different uh, user, user groups. Uh, based on different uh, uh, resource contributors. For the uh, storage systems, now we are the safe and also safe file systems is the uh, core uh, storage systems supporting uh, our uh, cloud services. Uh, that's the uh, uh, typical uh, frameworks of our systems. So the uh, distributed cloud systems uh, we, we are running, uh, we call that the uh, DICOS, distributed cloud uh, operating systems, <coughs> making use of the open cloud, uh, supporting the uh, core services and also the uh, on-demand uh, uh, work, uh, work node environment. <coughs> Some uh, details of the uh, op open stack uh, uh, configurations and also the uh, uh, resources are listed here. And we also integrate the Kubernetes, <coughs> supporting the uh, user clusters, uh, as I mentioned in the uh, previous slides. And also, uh, <coughs> we uh, uh, integrate some uh, high availability to the uh, core services uh, in the systems. The user web-based user interface is uh, <coughs> uh, uh, <coughs> uh, 
a very important uh, components to the uh, whole systems, not just uh, the uh, web portal, but also the uh, web terminal and also Jupyter Lab, so that users could uh, easier <coughs> to, to, for the development for education and also for production services, et cetera. <coughs> the storage. <coughs> For the storage, yeah, <clears throat> about uh, 30 thirty percent of the this storage yards are uh, supporting the uh, WCG, and for the uh, uh, safe file system, that's another uh, uh, 30 thirty percent. <clears throat> about eight petabytes are uh, uh, managed by the uh, safe file systems, and also we are supporting cloud uh, storage, <clears throat> uh, similar to the Dropbox services. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, for the uh, safe file systems. <clears throat> oh. Yeah, jet lag. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. We are going to develop the, the tape, tape library based the remote backup. Uh, from this year, uh, started from about uh, four petabytes. That's for for two uh, primary uh, purposes. The first one is for the, the data backup of, for the user community for sure. The second thing is that as backup of our DACO systems, once there is any failure of the safe uh, services, then we can uh, uh, very quickly uh, set up another uh, <coughs> uh, uh, a file system for users so that the uh, uh, services uh, impact will be uh, uh, reduced a lot. And also, uh, we we also set up, for example, multiple FBS and also uh, the uh, <coughs> uh, for the uh, higher availability of the safe uh, file systems based on the experiences uh, <coughs> uh, in the past few years. And also multiple uh, mount servers for the uh, uh, growing uh, safe clusters for the growing of the user's needs. Yeah. Because of the time, I think I could, I, I should speed up the uh, uh, slides. Yeah. For the integration of the um, machine learning uh, uh, based analysis support, of course, the Jupyter, <coughs> uh, which could be uh, access to the uh, PyTorch TensorFlow uh, Keras uh, environment. And based on the uh, user's needs, <coughs> we integrate several uh, applications. For example, the Alpha Fold. <coughs> That's also uh, uh, supporting the uh, Cloud EM data analysis. Uh, I will show you later. And also, for example, the uh, molecular dynamics uh, uh, kits. That's, that's all uh, uh, demand, demanded from the uh, user communities. So that we integrate the services as part of our cloud uh, uh, services. That's, I think that's also the typical approach as uh, you can understand uh, <clears throat> if you are providing such you, such uh, services. For example, uh, we integrate the user application, the application for workflow, and also the cloud infrastructure. And with the uh, <clears throat> high performance computing environment is to use uh, analysis pipeline and also uh, <clears throat> integrate the research data management. And we are going to uh, 
collect some use cases, uh, making use of the uh, machine learning analysis. And uh, <clears throat> whenever it's possible, we hope to, uh, to make the, uh, uh, those uh, materials from the use cases to be open based on the FAIR uh, principle, including everything you, you, you can imagine uh, from the uh, research uh, uh, processes. And also, uh, <clears throat> in the future, we hope to uh, leverage those uh, exp expertise from our academy, from different fields, to, uh, <clears throat> uh, to have the uh, volunteer groups to support in the uh, machine learning data analysis uh, needs in the, uh, uh, in, in the academy. And also, uh, <clears throat> the last objective here is to uh, build in the uh, capacity uh, according to the uh, uh, growing uh, user community and also the requirements. One of the typical example uh, beyond the high energy physics is the, is the uh, stru structure biology application, <clears throat> making use of the CRA-EM uh, facility. So we're supporting the um, integration of the software environment, uh, web, web user interface, integration with the uh, uh, application framework and also the cloud infrastructure. Now we are we also supporting the alpha fault uh, for the users as a reference uh, for the stru structure, et cetera. Yeah. So for now, we've been developing more than uh, 50 uh, web application. Uh, each one, let's say, uh, web user interface. So uh, when you click the, this one and <clears throat> you can access to the service, uh, making use of the cloud infrastructure directory, uh, for example, and you can see the resource utilization status uh, from the web user interface. So uh, as I mentioned, the web user interface, the web terminal, the Jupyter Lab environment, etc., and integrate with the uh, underlying infrastructure. <coughs> uh, from the computing storage uh, system and also the uh, machine learning software uh, framework, etc. Yeah. That's another application to <clears throat> working together with the uh, uh, space center in Taiwan and also other Asia partners, try to make use of the satellite images for the uh, uh, hazard risk reduction applications. Also the earthquake application, another example and this is the uh, <clears throat> research data management called Depositar. Yeah, that's de developed by another institute in Academia Sinica. So together we build up these services and being part of the uh, DICOS uh, visits and uh, supporting the uh, uh, research workflow <clears throat> for the all academy of our users. Probably because of the uh, network problem, I, I cannot <laughs> connect to Zoom uh, at this moment. Sorry. Anyway, so in summary, yeah, <clears throat> because I, I cannot connect to Zoom, so uh, I, I just. Uh, so in summary, we are moving to the uh, open science, as I mentioned in the beginning. And uh, the approach to collaborate with the user community. For us, we are keep up, up, update. Yes, yes, yeah, I have network problems. That's all right. I'm sorry, that, let me uh, jump to the summary, uh, directory. Yeah. 
we are co collaborating with the, the user community. That's the, uh, the, the, the key strategy uh, for our center uh, to keep updates of the uh, scientific computing environment and also the uh, application environment. We support the uh, data analysis pipeline and also the uh, workflow integrations. And uh, <clears throat> in the future, uh, to make these, these services and resources uh, uh, scalable, I think distributed resource federation will be a, a, a feasible approach. So based on the distributed cloud a system and also technologies from the uh, WCG, that will be a, a very good uh, study point. And uh, <clears throat> of course, the machine learning uh, enabled data analysis services will be uh, necessary uh, in the future. I think <clears throat> that's the uh, experiences from Taiwan. Thank you so much. Any question? Okay. Yes. Yeah. In general, it's good enough. Yeah, it's quite reliable. Of course, there are also some uh, challenges. Yeah, because of time, I I didn't share those uh, uh, experiences we we had. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. You mean the, the prediction of uh Hardware or art. Earthquake, yeah. Yeah, that's collaboration with the uh, seismologist. Yeah. Yes. There are two things, primary. The first thing, we are uh, working with them to develop the uh, sensor network and then collect data from there, and then they could uh, analyze those, those, those data collected. The second thing is supporting the simulation of the uh, 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 seismic waves. Yes. Yeah. So, which needs uh, quite huge uh, computing resources. Yeah. For the sensor network, they, they need a uh, huge storage. Yes. <laughs> yes, please. Yes. Yeah, the primary use is the, the typical file system, uh, making use of uh, uh, the safe uh, FS. The second thing is that, which is similar to Dropbox, that's the purely uh, web based. Yes. Yeah. You can upload and download and sharing the links. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> there are different challenges and also, uh, in fact, barriers because of the, 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 the first thing is about the data. Who owns the data? Who has the right to share the data? That's one thing. The second thing is uh, in what stage of the, uh, uh, the, the research life cycle. Yeah. Most of the uh, scholars, they could share the data only if all the uh, research has been done. Yeah. But we can support the uh, uh, from the uh, collection of the data analysis and also the uh, development of the uh, research publications and then curation of the data. Yeah. 
when the owner decided to share, then we can support them to do that. Is to uh, collaborate with the user communities. Yes. Thank you. John Wong, John Wong. <laughs> so John Wong, can you hear me? Okay. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, the, yeah, thanks uh, for John Wong. And uh, I want to talk, I want to uh, start your in our, sorry, presentation yeah, from the remote site. Can you? Okay. Uh, okay. So let me try to share my screen. Please. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, can you hear? See okay, my screen? I can see. I can see. What now? Wait a moment. Oh, okay, good. Okay. So, I can start. Sure. Okay, thank you. Okay, sorry for not yet be with all your guys there. Yeah. But I I hope all of you are enjoying this beautiful scenery over here, yeah, Nepal. Anyway, I'm talking in my office now about the title "Preparing Cloud Native by Data Centric Computing for Live Express AI Services." And so, the first slide is actually let me try to yeah say tell about, we've been collaborating, some people there is actually our collaborator. We, I and some kind of say, several people, yeah. I guess, Ralong Khan, University Malaya, and I was Taiwan team, yeah, is actually collaborating over something called the Open Federation at Hain Triple Plus. So it's a kind of say collaboration, it's, actually covering some of the dispute cloud and edge style screen. So basically that, that this experience actually partially reflected in the space talk and that is kind of introductory thing. And so I've been talking about this topic for many times, but there, there are several things to be updated. The first one is when we say something cloud, basically the, my talk is today about Purpose computing, cloud, and AI. Basically, you can think of it. Yeah. The talk is basically around those. After Eric, the talk before is also talking about type of computing thing, data thing, and the partial AI, right? Everyone's talking this one. And I'm talk also talking about this one, but the title is basically let me start with something called the DNA, data, networking, and AI paradigm. So something and a code terms, I think you may like this term DNA, right? Okay. So can I can you guys see my cursor there? Or yeah, let me just go ahead. Okay, this is DNA. Okay. So basically what I want to say, I because there is something called the X plus AI services, right one, right? So I need to start with X plus AI services. Okay. What this stands for is AI will be used for some domain X. So they, that's AI plus X. And then X plus AI is basically X domain will utilize the AI technology for their domain's purposes. Basically X plus AI is giving more emphasis on domain. Then AI should be yeah, used for that. Can you interpret things this way? X plus AI, domain X, will be kind of the owner of those data, right? All this accumulated data with the expertise, expert people in the domain, their collection of the data accumulated, that those data should be given to AI tools so that it can be used to generate these kind of say models, AI models to be used, right? Anyway, this is the concept. So when we say X plus AI, you can think the domain X data will be provided to AI. Then the generate output, the model will be, say, leverage it to enable very much smart and intelligent services. Okay, that's the kind of say concept. 
Then if you go further into this one, I think everyone knows about training and influencing seeing stages of those AI deployment, right? So can we say training with a given input and the data set, and then we we'll train the models and with the inferencing, we will say, we we'll say about, okay, those the inference, no, sorry, yeah, the trained model will be used to the inferencing. And here, let me try to define the term called the live AI here means. So, okay, we, it is a given data set, the data set, we may train it and generate some AI model, okay? Then it will be used for some new incoming inferencing data set, but everything is kind of separate without connected to each other. So, but I think like, what I'm trying to say is, it's very much training thing and inference will be linked together dynamically. Which basically means when we are trying to inference something, some, some data, Okay, for some given data, it may work fine, but some for some something it may not work as we expected. Then those results will be kind of say simultaneously at the training stage, and the training will try to accumulate those failure cases and try to regenerate or retrain the models. Those retrained models will be put back to inferencing and will be evaluated. So if this kind of say training and the retraining and this thing is kind of say circulating and we continuously making the things improving. That maybe called we can call this some kind of liveness is achieved. So that's definition of live here. Okay, then then what we can say is can we really want to make this kind of say live, which is really working in real say deployment situation, okay? So what we need to think of, right? So data set should be kind of say given, and, and then the testing or maybe inferencing is will be applied. So all these things, if you think of that way, so people are realizing that automation should be there in the environment, target environment, right? If you're taking the example of smart factory, but then this factory should be automated. All this kind of manufacturing process should be automated first, which actually means which will give us accumulation of data. And also we will try to, with some initial accumulation, we will try to influence it with some kind of initial test model, test AI model. And then we will try to retrain it, right? Basically, the overall stage of kind of really applying AI technology to the real field, like the factories and the farms, is actually automation should be there so that accumulation of data can be made and, and all those smartness we are expecting can be accomplished. Okay, that's the kind of order I'm emphasizing again. Here, the life is actually the key thing, right? Then, this kind of environment should not happen, okay, because it's a very much systematic kind of thing. The automation with the support of ICT infrastructure should be there. So then the paradigm change of a data-centric cloud native is actually supporting that, right? So when we say this DNA-based infrastructure should be there, but still, Accumulation data, but then think about those that say training resources, AI training resources, they are really expensive, right? We are hearing this day the ChatGPT, but they also require huge amount of say computing resources behind, which actually means, but the resources are kind of say a little bit say located in a centralized location file the generation of data is actually disputed. So the transfer of data from those, say, sites, okay, to those, say, centralized AI computing locations should happen, right? Data transfer should be there, but which is actually another, so happy work to be done. Anyway, those things are, yeah, required both, sorry, yeah.
then on the other things about the data thing is really important, data centric, right? So data thing is really important. Also governance of those data, privacy concerns, and all this kind of say, you know, security concerns have to be governed. Why this all this intelligent say capability, intelligence capability analysis of those data through yeah, high performance data analytics as well as AI tools, right? That those sites should go together. Anyway, this is something we can call it as data centric computing, right? Again, the diagram is basically saying this DNA logic should be there. Also, open data transfer thing, metadata, can you say unified metadata, which facilitates exchange of, say, data, exchange of data and sharing of data should be there in our infrastructure. But leveraging cloud is kind of so full picture here. The other side is cloud native computing, right? From advanced point of from cloud, virtualized cloud to containerized cloud native thing, partially accompanied the service computing is a really important thing to achieve. Okay. My voice is clear there over there. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, any problem hearing my voice or it's all oh, kinds yeah, of okay, yeah, you very well. Yep. Okay, good. Yeah. Let me just continue. So cloud native computing slide, I believe everyone there knows about this cloud native, this blue color, the Kubernetes orchestrated ones. They also spreading. And especially for this edge computing side, they are really because can we look at smart factories or smart farms? So technically, you can think of those locations which belong to the main X, right? X here can be, say, manufacturing. So, oh, so, sorry, yeah. Factories, as X can be agriculture thing, but the physical location of it is really at the environment. So what I want to emphasize, the systematic kind of design of cloud-native at computing back supported by back-end, so main core cloud data centers is kind of a so picture behind, right? So that should be considered. So let's go for this together. So with this support, the live city square express a service realization kind of what people are trying to achieve. So let me try to go that vision. Okay, the first thing I emphasized live X plus AI service realization is really the key capability we need to, to work together to accomplish what to really benefit from all this AI technology to the domain X. And all these things requires some kind of say coordinated effort. It may be kind of titled open infrastructure should be built. Open here means everyone should be able to enjoy. Cloud leveraged infrastructure is actually kind of open ones, so, but there's some kind of say, payment issues to be settled behind. And the common platform, okay? Here with the common platform, so all these data tools, we need to share the data here and there. All these arrangements should be there more systematic way which it actually means it should be incorporated our futuristic platform, supporting platform, so our service realization, X plus A service realization. So if you see this upper right-hand corner, then you can see this something called protected data pipeline tools with a connected data rate. And actually this is some kind of state very much coordinated the data platform thing and also cloud native orchestration. On top of those, you will do the service realization. So basically, what I see the world is kind of gradually moving toward this thing. Also, you may heard of something called the MSA, microservices architecture, right? Cloud native MSA type of service is, is kind of Becoming de facto, becoming de facto, say trend, 
defect standard, okay, or service realization. So open infrastructure, common platform thing. So then if you think of those, the trial in Guangzhou, actually, Guangzhou is actually kind of a sample location to Korean government about doing this kind of express AI complex thing. Here we are building kind of say one AI data centers, which is now this year, it's the construction completed, the day will start to serving. The day will become year in production. And that center will support car, domain car, domain energy, domain healthcare, three main domain, plus alpha domains. Those will be test bed built up so that all these companies around it will collaborate, but supported by AI cloud data center, right? But so that's kind of full picture. But if you think of this kind of scale, and you, you really want to achieve is some kind of city scale. Also, I draw the omnibus, say, digital twin diagram here on the right hand side. Basically, what I can say is city scale, digital screen type of the service realization. It's kind of the kind of the trend that people are kind of going ahead. So, so let me repeat this. So if you really want to interpret this vision, so how, how do we want to try to do is there are two ways, okay? When people are talking about deploying AI things, so in this right-hand side, you can see offline the physical real world deployment of AI thing. Then then there the liveness should be there, right? So I said liveness means this kind of training inference will be coupled directly so that the say model will improve and then the kind of failure thing will be re, re, re evaluated, right? And retrained. That thing will go there. And also same way in the in our digital twin part, online one, mm -hmm. that thing can go, right? So but thing is the point is we will have to leverage between the this online one and offline one. Something like, okay, some kind of virtualized testing. You don't, okay, in the like autonomous driving, let me take the example of autonomous driving. The car should be able to drive safely all, all kinds of load situation. So, but you cannot put the real car in some kind of testing mode, right? You may want virtualized state on simulation, but which really, involves all this AI thing, then you may be able to validate to some level and final output. The kind of model will be used and then will be put into real driving car and then pass it. So this left, the online one, cyber one, digital twin one will be light and the physical one, all this situation. But this is going bigger and bigger scale over the time. That is the kind of vision here. So again, same picture. So that's kind of supported. So, oh, sorry. This is the last part. To kind of say, oh shit, this kind of vision thing. This is now actually opportunity having oper start operating some kind of say supercomputing open infrastructure, which is named the Dream AI. Okay, so let me show next, okay, sorry, yeah, next slide. This one is some kind of infrastructure, which is a small portion of the kind of AI data center, which I just mentioned, it will start operating this year, but this HPCA open infrastructure is still already operating and now going into real full production this March, end of this March, we are going there. And so, so this one actually has about 20 size legs and this consumes, yeah, oh, there are some Korean words, but one up to one megawatt power. And so the thing is we, this machine is actually listed on top 500 and the 178 position, as you can see. So actually it's a really supercomputer kind of splitting 
HDL high performance impact performance mm. and operate through kind of cloud and partially cloud native way. As you can see, so the G service portal user will try to utilize this HPC AI combined infrastructure, right? Through Kubernetes side and then, then some CSI storage interface. But I try to say this facility is actually trying to accommodate and the kind of back end support for kind of say express AI service realization. Anyway, that's kind of things we are currently undergoing. And so I kind of skipped a lot of details slides due to time limit. Anyway, this is the whole picture we are going ahead. And I think it's time for Q&A. Thank you, John Wong. And uh, are there any questions from uh, the audience? Or, ah, okay. Hey, John Wong, Andrew here. Um, okay. How are you doing your collaboration with Public Cloud? How do you farm the job? You mean, okay, can you, Public Cloud collaboration, right? Yeah. Okay. To, okay, the national situation here in Korea is we are going to that is a kind of next stage. Basically, the first thing we are trying to do is, okay, as you can see, you can see this one, right? This infrastructure has one stage for computing center, right? Also, we have this one, something called KIST. You know about KIST, right? Yeah. It's running our national supercomputing center. So basically, the first stage we are mainly pushing effort is this national one and this specialized ones, let me say one national ones and the 10 domain specific okay domain specific a special department centers that collaboration is being pushed a lot here in korea as part of extending that one so collaboration with public cloud it actually should be pushed but not in direct shown in this slide actually basically two separate kind of say parallel approach Collaboration public cloud also going ahead by all this kind of national and the special support center collaboration also being pushed. But still we need to establish that collaboration, this one and that one. I think it for you. So if I can just summarize, you're pushing mm -hmm. it over to Kisti, who will be dealing with the public cloud aspect. Is that correct? Oh, they are also trying that one. So some of the data kind of exchange facility, some of the open exchange concept. They are also moving on that direction starting with this year. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you. So basically, uh, yes. So you can interpret it that way. So through KST, kind of public cloud yeah, collaboration is kind of being coordinated by also at the same time, is putting the KST at the center. So Specialized shopping centers will also make us some kind of systemic approach to collaborate together. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. Thank you for your question. Yeah. Thank you, Jean. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions? Jean, so Kurenet and Kisti is connected with the one TeraBPS connection. Is this right? What? You mean Kurenet? Yeah, SquareNet and KIST is connected with one tera BPS. Yeah, wow, it's oh, amazing. Yeah, okay, so the presentation, yes, because actually yeah, KIST yeah. is actually, they are operating SquareNet. It's kind of say local connection there. So uh -huh. yeah, the diagram is kind of confusing. If you see SquareNet, is actually located in some city called the Dejan, and then, then they are main center for SquareNet. So it's kind of one tera there is a, say, Local one, but as you can also see this 400G kind of see, right? Mm -hmm. Between Kernet and the one regional center. So Gwangju is actually one regional center to the Kernet. Mm -hmm. We do now have a 400G connection, then we have 100G connection yeah. to this one. So mm -hmm. that fit means actually to the this PST national center, we have a kind of say 100G kind of say capability. <laughs> Great. Are there any questions from the audience or Zoom? No questions at all? Yeah. Okay, thank you, Vijayan Yeah, yes, nice presentation. You. Yeah. Thank you.
care. Please enjoy. Okay, let's go Bye. to the next. Ah, okay, okay. Thank you very much. And uh, let's go to the next presentation. And uh, so, but by the way, so my presentation is a uh, buffering. <laughs> so yeah, buffer of this play association. So, uh, Mir Muhammad, are there? Do you? Ah, okay. No. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, thank you very much. So usually, so the core member of the crowd working group, Jomon and uh, Eric and I usually make a presentation, but by the way, so Muhammad uh, tried to support us, so uh, prepare and propose to make a presentation about the IBN and uh, overlay network in cloud intent-based networking here. So, Is it right? Okay, so. Okay, yeah. Ah, so, so he will send you a Zoom link. Share screen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so right, so yeah.
Thank you. Thank you. Sorry for the uh, inconvenience and uh, keeping you wait. Yes. Yes. Just. Thank you. So. Uh, I have to close the mic. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, but not on mute. So only the volume. We did. We did mute it. Mute. We muted it, but it's slow actually, so, so it will take some time. Oh. Uh, 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 no. <laughs> Wait a moment. Yeah. Mm. Done. Yeah, but it's still <laughs> coming. I think it takes some time. Yes. the stories and then so turn off the <laughs> so for the manual yeah okay it's still coming So you can uh, hear me? I think it's fine now. OK, thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, I am Mir Mohammed Suleiman Sarwar. And uh, I am a student at uh, Jeju National University at uh, Network Convergence Lab. Uh, basically, the topic of my presentation is uh, IBM-based orchestration of overlay network for multiple OpenStack clouds. <clears throat> I will uh, briefly uh, introduce my topic and uh, uh, I will explain. Uh, I have divided my presentation into three uh, simple parts. Uh, the first part is an introduction of uh, the application, the IBM application that we have developed for the uh, overlay network between OpenStack based clouds. Uh, uh, so this, uh, the first part is an introduction of the problem statement. The second part will uh, be uh, presenting our IBM that we have developed. It will also include some demo screenshots as well. Um, and the last part is some uh, decision making uh, using the machine learning. Uh, and then I will conclude my talk. So uh, uh, this presentation is actually about uh, IBM uh, application for orchestration of overlay networks between uh, multiple OpenStack based clouds. Uh, actually, uh, clouds need to share the resources with one another. Uh, the problem with clouds to share their resources and services 
with another cloud is that they cannot communicate directly. There must be some overlay network between them. So we have developed an IBM application, an intent-based networking application uh, that can receive the intent, that can deploy clouds for you. Uh, it can uh, One application can be used for deploying multiple clouds at different places. And then the same application can deploy an overlay network between these clouds. And then the same application allows you to uh, orchestrate and manage the network uh, in different ways. For example, uh, creation of the optimal uh, topology, for example, uh, selecting the best path for communication uh, between a source and destination, and many more. <clears throat> uh, so to introduce IBM, uh, uh, actually this concept was uh, introduced by IETF, Intent-Based Networking Application. So these applications uh, are actually uh, a network that can be managing managed using intent. So what is an intent? An intent is uh, a set of operational goals and outcomes defined in a declarative manner without specifying how to uh, achieve uh, or implement them. For example, if the, uh, uh, the intent is that I want to deploy a tunnel between some node A and some node B, so this can be provided in a very simple words, the application itself will uh, translate the intent and then will generate configurations for it and then will execute on the underlying system and will deploy the configuration, the network configurations for it. <clears throat> so uh, from our point of view, uh, what we are talking about network orchestration that is required. So we are talking, focusing mainly on two things. That is an optimal uh, overlay network creation between the OpenStack based multiple clouds as well as the best path selection. For example, uh, the uh, path that is less conjecture, that is predicted to be less congested, that is the best path that has the minimal delay or other factors. <coughs> so uh, each of the uh, link in the overlay network that we are talking about is a Geneve tunnel, that is a layer two tunnel, such as VXLAN or Geneve tunnel. <coughs> So our uh, proposed IBM solution uh, actually deploys clouds at uh, different destinations. And then uh, when it uh, deploys the clouds, then it deploys an overlay network uh, between these uh, clouds. So instances of a cloud can then communicate with instances of another cloud. And uh, these tunnels are actually deployed using the OVS of the OpenStack clouds. So uh, we can then uh, use uh, different flow rules for controlling traffic on each of the uh, OVSs. <clears throat> so uh, in our proposed solution, uh, 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 an IBM manager uh, can create us, uh, can, different crea can create different users that have different uh, privileges such as site managers or service provider. A site manager can then deploy cloud nodes uh, and can launch instances at his uh, cloud, can actually manage uh, sites. Uh, uh, then an IBM manager can deploy tunnels between uh, different uh, 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 clouds. Uh, and then we can view the topology on an SDN controller. A service provider can then uh, submit an intent. Suppose it requires a, a, a resource from an OpenStack based cloud to a source to a destination cloud. And when they submit it, the machine learning model will be triggered and it will find the shortest path or the best path for that particular uh, intent. In a, eventually, that path uh, will be deployed in terms of flow rules over the uh, OVSs. So we have a closed loop cycle at the end of which the uh, intent is. Uh, assured. Uh, this is the uh, overall architecture of the system that we propose. Uh, we can see that uh, on top of the architecture we have our IBM that is managing uh, and uh, uh, deploying uh, OpenStack based clouds and uh, the uh, overlay network between these clouds. So it is orchestrating. Uh, we can see that there are different components uh, in this system. For example, at each particular site, we have an OpenStack based clouds. Uh, also, we have monitoring tools deployed for gathering network metrics that can be used to train machine learning models to take uh, uh, decisively. Uh, and on the top of it is the IBM application. 
So this is the uh, second part of my presentation uh, in which I will uh, uh, show the uh, workflow, uh, how our uh, developed application is actually uh, doing this. And I will also explain the mechanism of how uh, this is done. So uh, to summarize, uh, our uh, uh, application has three uh, major roles, uh, an IBM manager, a site manager, and a service provider. A site manager actually uh, sets uh, a particular site and then deploys cloud nodes at his particular site. He's actually the manager of one particular site. Uh, and then uh, we have service providers that can actually host some services uh, uh, at instances of the clouds. Uh, and uh, the IBM manager can have a global view of all the clouds deployed. It can also deploy the tunnels. That is, it can deploy the, he can deploy the uh, overlay network between all of these clouds to uh, uh, to establish communication. <clears throat> so these are some workflows uh, we can see about these different roles. Uh, we can see that an IBM manager can create different users such as site managers or service providers. A site manager can actually uh, create uh, a site. He can then deploy cloud nodes at his particular site. Uh, actually, one particular cloud can have multiple control or compute nodes, as we know that. So a site can have then multiple nodes, and these nodes are then uh, deployed by the uh, IBM manager. So uh, uh, then we can see that when different uh, uh, cloud sites and cloud nodes are deployed, the IBM manager can actually establish a tunnel between any and collectively, all of these tunnels will then establish the uh, overlay network. <clears throat> a service provider can then uh, submit an intent. The intent can be uh, some service with some quality of service parameter that he requires from a destination, uh, from a destination cloud and instance. And the uh, when the service provider submits an intent, it will actually uh, it triggers the internal mechanism of the IBM that can actually uh, translate the intent, create policies for it, and then uh, uh, take uh, the output of the ML and then uh, 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 result a, uh, a path, a path for the communication. Uh, eventually, these uh, uh, these two uh, clouds can then communicate over the resultant path. So we have an uh, off-platform uh, off uh, application in our IBM that acts as the central entity of communicating with all the other components that decides the end-to-end uh, uh, -end path and also calculates the flow rules for the end-to-end -end path and then deploys those flow rules uh, through the SDN. So initially, uh, the IBM actually uh, a service provider uh, when submits an intent, the OPA can get the uh, the intent from the uh, IBN. Once the IBN, uh, once the IBN, once the OPA gets the uh, intent and all the parameters, it can feed this to the uh, machine learning model, such as GNN. The GNN or some other uh, machine learning model can then uh, return a path in the form of nodes and edges that these could be the resultant particular uh, intent. And eventually, the path will be not only stored in the IBN, but the OPA will also calculate the end-to-end -end flows for it. So these flows will be also provided to the IBN as well as to the SDN controller. And the SDN controller will then deploy these flow rules. And eventually, the source and destination can communicate over that particular path. <coughs> So these are some screenshots of uh, our application. Uh, we can see that uh, a site manager is uh, adding cloud nodes and then uh, deploying cloud nodes. This is uh, the slide that I'm trying to explain uh, the internal mechanism of how the uh, uh, cloud nodes are deployed. Actually, the uh, IBM application, when uh, wishes to deploy the uh, cloud nodes, so it accepts some uh, system credentials from the uh, site manager, and then it creates uh, scripts. We are actually using MicroStack uh, uh, for OpenStack deployment. So it then 
uh, uses those scripts and uh, deploys the cloud at that particular target site. <clears throat> Uh, we can then see an OpenStack cloud that is deployed. Uh, we can also see that when a particular cloud node is uh, deployed, so the IBM uh, attaches the OVS to the SDN controller. So we can also see one particular node that appears on the uh, SDN uh, controller. Uh, so similarly, if we deploy another cloud node, so that also appears. Uh, these these are these cloud nodes are actually deployed by uh, site managers. So uh, when these are uh, deployed, uh, the system also attaches it to the SDN controller, the OVS of the cl cloud. So these, these uh, OVSs, these switches that we see here are actually uh, open flow virtual switches of the open stack that is attached to the SDN controller. So one of these switch actually represents an open stack cloud and then different instances of the cloud are then attached to this particular uh, uh, switch. Uh, the next job is by the uh, IBM manager to deploy a particular tunnel. So he selects any two uh, nodes. First of all, adds the tunnel information, uh, then uh, deploys the tunnel. Uh, this generates the scripts for tunnel. As tunnels are bidirectional, uh, so the tunnel needs to be established from both directions. So for this purpose, uh, uh, two scripts are generated that are executed from both sides and eventually this deploys the uh, tunnel. Also the uh, latest uh, versions of uh, MicroStack uh, and OpenStack, they support uh, Geneve tunnels. So currently uh, Geneve tunnels, the latest uh, form of <coughs> layer two tunnels. So once the tunnel is deployed, we can then see in the uh, topology that one particular tunnel appears and gradually deploying different nodes and tunnels, uh, a topology uh, appears. So these are some uh, list of uh, site managers and service providers. Uh, and these are some list of uh, nodes uh, that are deployed. I actually kept some of the nodes as deployed and some of them as not deployed to, uh, to present the difference that only those nodes that are deployed will be uh, presented in the uh, topology. So we can see that there are three nodes uh, that are deployed. Uh, and then uh, here we can see three tunnels that are deployed between a uh, source and destination. So eventually when different uh, nodes and uh, different tunnels are deployed, so we get a topology uh, like this. Uh, and also the topology, this is actually the SDN controller that we have attached to our IBM. Uh, we can see the topology as well as we can see the port numbers and we can also see the flows that are uh, with one particular switch. But we also have uh, a graph uh, such as this and uh, this actually graphically uh, represents a particular best path for uh, an intent. So we have a menu from which we can select a, a intent and it will then show us the uh, best path. It will highlight us uh, the best path that was selected. <clears throat> so uh, after uh, deploying tunnels, suppose the uh, service provider submits an intent. The intent contains a service name that is required, quality of service parameters, and uh, uh, source and destination from which it uh, requires the service. So. Uh, when the intent is submitted, the OPA is triggered, the off-platform application is triggered, it gets all the parameters from the uh, intent, submits it to the machine learning model, the model calculates a path for it that is submitted uh, by the OPA to the IBN, as well as uh, the OPA then calculates end-to-end -end flow rules uh, for that particular path. So uh, these flow rules are then uh, provided to the IBN as well as to the SDN controller by the off-platform application. And the SDN controller then deploys uh, those flow rules. So for that particular intent, the communication is then uh, done on the uh, best path. <clears throat> uh, eventually, we can see that uh, the flow rules are deployed over the SDN controller. Uh, and uh, paths can be 
uh, visualized for the uh, flows that were deployed. And uh, at the end, the instances of cloud can then communicate with the instances of the other cloud. Actually, previously, these two instances were from two different clouds, so they were unable to communicate. So once the flow rules were deployed for the best paths, now they can uh, communicate. <clears throat> Uh, then uh, for testing in our lab, we also deployed many nodes uh, and topologies and uh, we can see that uh, different graphs eventually came up and different intents were submitted and calculated flow rules for it and then we can uh, visualize the paths for particular flow rules uh, such as this. Uh, the next part is the uh, part where I will discuss the monitoring and the machine learning part. So uh, actually, uh, as we were focusing on two different uh, perspectives of uh, IBM, one was the topology creation and the other one was uh, selecting the best path for uh, communication. So we have tried different models. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, we use some classification models to classify some particular target node as a node from which a communication can be done with minimal delay. So tunnel is then established with that. Similarly, then combining all the tunnels, uh, an optimal uh, topology can be uh, constructed. Uh, also for the path selection, uh, we used uh, GNN uh, for calculating the best path, uh, graph neural network uh, that returns us uh, in the form of uh, nodes and we can then construct path from that in the form of nodes edges uh, but uh, also uh, other models can be used for uh, uh, path selection such as uh, LSTM plus uh, uh, that can uh, predict uh, the forecasted uh, performance of some particular path and then we can uh, deploy flow rules for that. So we are considering different machine learning models uh, some of which uh, we have utilized that I will present. Uh, together, uh, uh, data for training machine uh, machine learning model, uh, we have actually deployed this uh, monitoring architecture. Uh, so, uh, first of all, we uh, collect uh, different uh, ne network metrics such as uh, delay, jitter, throughput, uh, latency. And how to do that? Uh, we are using perf sonar. So when we perf sonar from a source to destination, it gives us some metrics. Uh, these, uh, uh, any number of tests are uh, executed by some bash script. These are actually then uh, uh, exported on a, uh, on a socket. That are actually then provided to uh, some PySpark code. The PySpark code uh, then pushes the data to uh, push gateway and eventually we have a time series database that can store time series data uh, that is Prometheus. So we have all the data at one particular uh, place that is Prometheus. The challenge here was to uh, gather data of all the links uh, simultaneously. For this reason, we executed the, uh, the code using multi-threading. And for each particular uh, link, we have uh, used a simple uh, separate thread using multi uh, uh, multi-threading. So eventually we have constructed uh, a data set uh, in our time series database that is Prometheus. So uh, these are some screenshots of our Prometheus database showing uh, delay, jitter and speed of some links. Uh, these are also some uh, uh, screenshots of the Grafana dashboard for visualizing the uh, data for training the machine learning models. Uh, these are the results of the classification model. So uh, we have used different models, but I have only uh, put here just to clarify uh, how classification models can actually uh, classify a link as the uh, best link to which a tunnel should be should be made. The link should be uh, with minimal delay. <clears throat> uh, these are the uh, outputs of the. Uh, GNN model for path selection. So the GNN model actually uh, uh, takes a network topology, uh, a routing configuration and traffic metrics and it uh, gives you an output 
uh, in the form of uh, uh, an array of bits. Actually, it gives you the probability of uh, each of the uh, nodes, the delay uh, will be at that particular node. So we then round them up, and uh, if the uh, probability is closer to zero, we round them to zero. If the probability is closer to one, we round them to one. Initially, we get uh, then we get uh, an array of zeros and one. So uh, here we get uh, 21, 20, and 16 nodes. Suppose we get ones. So this means that the GNN model has uh, resulted a path uh, from node 21 to 16 uh, by 21, 20, and 16. So this was the uh, output of the GNN model for path selection. <clears throat> so uh, that was all uh, from uh, uh, regarding the IBN. The IBN. Uh, any application can be classified as IBN if it contains some features uh, such as these uh, in itself. Suppose uh, the IBN should be closed loop, it should have abstraction, it should uh, take the input uh, in the form of uh, an intent, an abstract input, uh, it should be automated, it can translate the intent and uh, at the end of the cycle the intent is assured, uh, it is a closed loop cycle. So collectively, all these uh, features are if in a, in a networking application. So we can uh, classify it as uh, IBN. So uh, our IBN receives an intent. It automatically generates and executes scripts for uh, deploying cloud nodes, tunnels, and then manages these uh, uh, network, the overlay network. IBN receives intent and turns into machine executable configuration based on some policy uh, <coughs> configuration for intents are deployed at the, at the end the intent is assured it's a closed loop cycle and for intelligence uh, we bring different machine learning model for uh, deciding uh, which path should be uh, used and how the topology can be uh, constructed so that was all from uh, my side thank you uh, any questions so far Thank <laughs> you.